Hello, I believe we can start our AMA session slowly. Are you ready for that? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, okay. So before talking about the project, I believe we can talk about you, your crypto background, and the team. Can you give us some information about yourself, uh, how long you have been in the crypto, and how many people there are in the team, and uh, some more information, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, hey guys, pleasure to be here and be part of the same session hosted by uh, Crypto Pyramid. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to get to know uh, all of you and talk about our project. Uh, so, my name is Claudio Mina. Uh, uh, I'm from uh, from Yash, Romania. This is uh, in the northeast part of the country. And I have been a software engineer for the past uh, seven years. Uh, and I have been working in, in various uh, companies such as uh, multinational companies, startups, and, and so on. Uh, but I always felt like that was actually not enough and I wanted to uh, do more for myself. And I actually started to uh, to look into the crypto space in uh, 2017. Uh, I actually didn't start any investments until 2020, but I actually took a close look in the, into the market. I just followed it around, followed its evolution. And I was actually very excited to uh, to be able to sort of like, uh, like see it expand uh, throughout various industries. I think that's actually very, very excited, exciting. Um, and I actually just, uh, wanted to, uh, to do more about that and to start a project for, uh, for myself. And then I started CIDON in, uh, 2021. Uh, I actually, uh, wanted to, uh, to make the, the ends meet for the first time between a funding portal and the blockchain because this has actually never been done before. Uh, and, uh, this was very, very, uh, uh, let's say like a, uh, uncultivated, uh, area. That is because uh, banks and a lot of uh, institutions from the finance industry have started to adopt blockchain. Uh, for example, IBM's blockchain solution, of course, it's not related to crypto, but it's still blockchain. Uh, has a lot of a lot of customers into the banking systems, and about ninety percent, according to their statistics, uh, of uh, of the banks are actually using their their blockchain uh, uh, system. And I actually thought, all right, so this might be a good opportunity for that. Uh, I also understood that um, uh, this was sort of like a, a, a very good fit and a very good use case for the blockchain application uh, for crowdfunding because basically you have transactions for investments. You can actually follow those around back and forth like investments cancellation. You can see the funding, uh, sorry, the funds for the fundraising being transferred to the project owner and so on. So uh, yeah, I saw this opportunity and I thought that it would be actually a, good, a very good use case for that. And uh, we have actually started CIDON in uh in uh, 2021 and it's actually uh its first operation uh, uh online has been in october okay okay thank you very much for this information let me quickly summarize them and translate them to turkish mm -hmm. After that we can continue arkadaşlar bugün e, sidon projesi bizlerle birlikte sidon projesinin e, kurucusu Claudio. by the way e, how to pronounce your name it is a little dif different name for us can you uh, tell me, is that correct? Claudio? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Today, uh, Claudio, we are with you, friends, the CEO of the CEO's project and CEO of the CEO's project. He has been working for a long time as a software engineer. He has been working as a software engineer. He has been working as a software engineer. He has been working as a software engineer. He has ee, banka, bankacılık sektörüyle ilgili bazı sıkıntılar, e, yaşadığı bazı sıkıntılardan dolayı e, bu projeyi çıkartmaya karar verdiğini e, bizlere söylüyor. And uh, can you tell me what is this Sidon project before getting into too much details? Can you make a brief introduction for people who might not, uh, who didn't hear it before? Yeah, sure. So uh, Sidon is a uh, is a crowd, is a blockchain based crowdfunding platform. Which is actually making, as mentioned before, ends meet for the first time between a, a funding portal and the um, and the blockchain technology. Uh, what has actually differentiated us from other projects is the fact that crowdfunding is in fact um, uh, fundraising and investments opportunities in uh, conventional startups. So it's not uh, it's not crypto projects, but actually conventional startups that people can actually uh, put their money in. Uh, of course, we're, we're actually making use of the blockchain to provide. Um, it's, uh, its main benefits, which is transparency, traceability, and uh, immutability, meaning that once a transaction has, of course, been uh, executed via the blockchain, that's uh, accessible to anyone who's part of the network and actually see 
uh, its origin, its destination, its uh, amount in the contract itself. Um, basically, what we're making use of, um, uh, I mean, for our token in the ecosystem, is to have it as a medium of payment, meaning that all transactions for investments in, in the fundraising opportunities are conducted through our token, Sion, our native token. Uh, which is actually providing us volume, uh, which is uh, which is additional to the to the one from the exchanges. Uh, this is very important because it actually distinguishes us from uh, uh, from other conventional crowdfunding platforms, and that is because we provide traceability and transparency for the transactions. So, for example, for for a conventional funding portal, uh, as an investor, you basically look for an opportunity. You know that you're putting your money into a funding portal, but what is going on from that point on? You actually have no idea, uh, and basically. Uh, you just have two sort of like two outputs for conventional crowdfunding. Uh, if the fundraising is completed, then the, the entrepreneur is getting the whole cash up front and is going to make use of that to, to, uh, uh, to develop the startup. But if it's not successful, they're going to get a refund. But if it's successful, basically have no idea on uh, what is the development of the startup, what is, what is its progress and, and so on. And as a way to address this uh, drawback from, um, from conventional crowdfunding, uh, in Sidon, we have a smart contract escrow model. What this means is the fact that once the fundraising has been completed, um, entrepreneurs will not get the cash up front. They will, in fact, get it um, uh, in stages, right? So this is going to be the this is going to be defined part of the listing request process, in which the roadmap is going to be split into implementation stages. Each implementation stage must have milestones and a specific period of time defined, and of course, an allocation for the capital at the total rate. Uh, for example, um, the minimum implementation stages a startup has to um, has to define is uh, is, is three. Uh, for the first stage, you cannot have more than twenty percent of the capital of the total capital raised, meaning that you're gonna get first only twenty percent of the capital raised. You're gonna have to get your startup moving. You're gonna have to complete your milestones, and if everything is um, is going to be according to plan, then uh, we're gonna mark those objectives, those milestones as done, and then we're going to immense. Uh, new capital infusion for the next implementation stage, meaning that we uh, we actually control the capital infusion at all times. Uh, investors can actually see this capital infusion that must be according to the, to the development of the startup itself. Uh, and of course, uh, we have done this in, uh, for multiple uh, reasons, but the main reason for this is to actually reduce fraud in the crowdfunding space. So basically, we just wanted to, um, uh, to discourage entrepreneurs to defraud investors Meaning that if I'm going to list on Sidon, I'm not going to be um, uh, encouraged to defraud investors because I'm not going to get the cash up front. I'm only going to get 20%. So if let's say that uh, there's, we're, we're going to have a project which is going to look to defraud investors, investors will, will lose at most 20%, having the rest of the 80% reimbursed to them. So we have basically made this as a motivation to, uh, to bring in uh, legit projects, but also to uh, protect investors from getting defrauded um, uh, by their uh, fundraisers. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this information. Uh, you covered a lot, and let me quickly uh, summarize them all and translate it to Turkish, and then we can continue. Arkadaşlar, e, Sidon nedir? E, bunu konuşalım hemen. Sidon bir e, ekosistem bir fon toplama ekosistemi, crowdfunding ekosistemi, e, platformu olarak karşımıza çıkıyor. Bu e, ekosistemde üç önemli e, özelliğe dikkat ediyorlarmış projelerde. E, birincisi e, güvenlik, güvenmek. İkincisi e, şeffaflık. İkincisi siber güvenlik. E, bu üç e, ana çerçeve noktasında, bu üç özellik noktasında projeleri fon topluyorlarmış. Kendi platformlarında şu şekilde fon toplanabiliyormuş. Bütün bu e, gereklilikler yerine getirildiğinde e, bu arkadaşlar e, olası bir e, skemi, olası bir e, rock pool'u engellemeyi hedefliyorlarmış. Kendi platformlarıyla birlikte e, kendi platformlarındaki toplanan fonların hepsinin e, özenle seçildiğini ve onlara özenle e, yatırım yapıldığını söyledi. Ee, bunlar e, kendi sağdıkları özelliklerinden birisi de e, akıllı kontrat e, escrow özelliği. E, bu özellikle birlikte hemen kontrol edelim. Bu özellikle birlikte bir fon topladığı zaman startup bir fon topladığı zaman o fonun e, bir sınırlı kısmına erişim sağlayabilecekmiş ilk başlarda. E, böylelikle o fonları kullandıkça kullandıkça e, o bu 
proje ya da ekibe fonları vermeye devam edeceklermiş. E, bunu yaparak da şunu hedeflediklerini söylediler. E, projenin e, olası durumlarda bütün fonları alıp kaçmasından ziyade e, bu fonların bir kısmına erişim sağlamasını sağlayaraktan e, ekibin ne kadar ciddi olduğunu e, görmek ve e, bunu ölçmek. Onun dışında kendilerinin bir e, kendilerinin bir iletişim kanalı olacakmış projelerle birlikte. E, böylelikle e, yatırımcılar direkt olarak e, yatırım yaptıkları şirketlerin ya da e, projelerin ekipleriyle kon- e, görüşebileceklermiş, iletişim kurabileceklermiş. E, herhangi bir şekilde sıkıntı yaşanmayacaklarmış bunun da, e, bu konuyla ilgili. Üçüncüsü de yatırımların e, şeffaf bir şekilde izlenebilmesi. E, kendi platformlarındaki her şeyin şeffaf bir şekilde çalışacağını söylüyorlar. Her şeyin e, şeffafça izlenebileceğini söylüyorlar. Okay. E, let's continue to talk about the tokenomics. Can you give us some information about the e, tokenomics of the project? After that, we will also uh, talk about the fundraising stage. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we're gonna oh, okay. Yeah. So basically, the way we have um, uh, the way we have actually designed our tokenomics is to have uh, most of the uh, liquidity out there. So we're actually holding very very uh, few tokens, which are allocated to the team members, which are allocated for reserves for marketing uh, and so on. So uh, basically what we're having right now, uh, I think it's about 8% of course in CoinMarketCap we have a, uh, we have actually asked for, a, uh, for an update for the circulated supply. Uh, at the moment the old supply is about uh, 202 million uh, CN out of uh, uh, total supply of 350 million and that is about uh, 58%. But then we also had, so this was in the, in the beginning, but then we also had, had a lot of staking pools provided uh airdrops and so on so basically uh what we have what we wanted to achieve and what, what we have achieved is to actually provide the control to the um, uh, community to the retail investors and not to uh to have everything in our control because uh, uh we thought we believe that this will actually provide more trust and more transparency in regard to our intentions in regard to our um, uh, direction for the startup and not look to uh to have the majority and to be able to control the market as uh, as we please Uh, so basically, what we have right now in regard to the tokens, uh, tokens allocated for the um, uh, for the team, uh, initially it was um, uh, it was locked for 12 months until uh, previous October, but then we extended the lock uh, until the uh, so for 24 months, which is going to be until next October. Uh, so basically, all uh, the tokens for the team and advisors have been locked uh, for for two years, um, and then we also have uh, the the rest for for staking, which has been released, uh, the private and public sale. Uh, public, private and public sale, um, uh, the tokens, uh, I think there was about 160 million for, for private and public. Um, I don't remember the exact amount because that was, uh, that was, uh, about a year and a half ago. But if you hover, I think it actually shows the, the value, the actual value. So yeah, basically what we wanted to achieve is to provide, uh, the power to the community and not to have the majority for us. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this information. Let me quickly translate them to Turkish. After that, we can continue with the fundraising stage and the details of it. Arkadaşlar, hemen e, token detayları hakkında konuşalım. E, token e, Binance Smart Chain anında uzun süredir e, lansmanın gerçekleşmiş bir şekilde. E, şu anda 55 bin dolarlık bir e, likitte sahip. E, hemen token mixi de açalım. %42'lik bir private ve public satışı gerçekleştirilmiş. E, Likitte e, için %15, pardon, likidite, likidite partnerlikler ve operasyon ücretleri için %15, %12'lik bir rezerv, e, ekip ve advisorlar için %14, e, stake için %17'lik bir e, token ayrılmış. E, onun dışında e, hemen... To, fon toplama noktasına geçelim. 200 bin dolarlık bir e, private round yapılmış. 1.2 milyon dolarlık bir e, pa, pa, e, public pre-sale yapıldığını görüyoruz. Bunun detaylarını hep birlikte soralım. E, can you also mention about the e, fundraising stage? Uh, the fundraising for us, you mean? Yes, yes, for the uh, ICO details uh, that uh, took place in 2021. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, what we had done, uh, then we actually had a private pre-sale and a public uh, public pre-sale round. Uh, for the private, uh, we have raised uh, two hundred thousand dollars, and for the uh, for the public one, have raised one point two million dollars. Uh, we have made use of this capital to to have the listings for the for the checks. We have been listed on uh, on BitMart and on Digifinex. Um, BitMart is selective, but we have actually dropped the uh, Digifinex uh, part of our listings. Uh, we have also listed on um, on PancakeSwap. We have provided the liquidity pool over there with BNB uh, that has been available since. Of course, we have uh, we have transferred the ownership for the pool and and so on to to actually take care of everything, and then we actually made use of the cash to develop the startup to get the license for the future asset service provider. Uh, what we're working right now, what we're actually doing, and uh, uh, what we are um, expecting from the authorities, but this is taking quite a lot of time because uh, of course it's a, it's a crypto startup, and when you're gonna have to deal with the authorities, this is sort of like a step back. Um, but we have been in a ping pong with information uh, back and forth with them uh, for getting the European crowdfunding service provider license so we can then step up our game and uh, actually do the uh, equity crowdfunding uh, campaigns. Because what we are having right now on our platform available for investments is a, uh, a pre-sale crowdfunding campaign, meaning that you're going to actually invest in the campaign and uh, sort of like pre-order a product. And then we also have something similar to um, an investment uh, to an APY-based investment. I mean that if you're going to put your money into the campaign itself, you're going to uh, then later on get uh, get rewards for that for a specific period of time. Okay, so in the uh, private round, uh, just in the open here, in the private round, uh, you raised uh, 200K and in the public per mm-hmm. sale round, you raised 1.2 million, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, how was the vesting schedules of these uh, investments? Uh, are there any locked token yet or all of them are unlocked? So uh, Yeah, no, all of them are unlocked. So we had uh, the vesting schedule that took place in 2022. And at the moment, uh, as we speak, everything has been uh, already unlocked. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this. Uh, let's continue with other question. Hello, can you hear me? Not sure if I lost you or is it... Uh... Hello, uh, my apologies. I believe I had a internet issue. Did you understand the question or would you like me to uh, repeat it for you? Uh, I actually didn't hear any, anything. Can you please repeat? Okay, so my question is about the roadmap. Can you tell me what you did so far, what you are focusing right now, and what are the future plans? Yeah, so uh, what we uh, have delivered so far is uh, the actual product of the white paper, which is a crowdfunding platform uh, based on the blockchain. Uh, But in fact, what we did is the fact that um, we had a few, uh, let's say, uh, drawbacks and roadblocks in regard to licensing for the the, uh, crowdfunding service provider license because we didn't want to wait until that until then we actually pro- developed a new product which is Sudan Finance that is a, a wallet with the staking capabilities the vesting has also been part of the of the specific wallet we also have a swapping functionality for that um, we also have um, uh, a news and the event section for uh, for the product itself we also have the functionality to buy a CN with fiat money which is uh, with debit card of course, for that, uh, there might be, I mean, there are some limitations according to, to the EU uh, legislation and regulations. Uh, but what I wanted to say with this is the fact that we developed the, the crowdfunding platform. But in addition to that, we also have developed um, a, a Web3 specific solution, which is actually focusing on, on that side only. 
Uh, our stage currently is the fact that we have the platform released. Uh, we have two fundraisers ongoing right now on our platform, and uh, the main focus for now is to actually have those completed, uh, see how it's going, everything's going to turn out, and then for the next steps, what we're looking to have is to basically scale up. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, we're just waiting for the uh, um, uh, the license in Europe, and once we have that, we're also going to be looking for uh, for, for VC investments, and then actually make use of the capital to scale up. Uh, that is because we have we basically have everything ready, everything is set up. We just want to prove our business model and our uh, product uh, in Europe, and then what's what's next is only to uh, to scale up our product. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this information. But I believe I'm having. Let me quickly. I'm sorry, but uh, we cannot. I mean, I cannot hear you. Not sure if it's from my side or your side. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me right now? Yes, I can hear right now. Mm -hmm. My apologies, I'm not sure what's happening, but uh, it should be fixed right now. I changed my internet and uh, just let me uh, quickly take up my notes and continue with the translation. Arkadaşlar, e, 2022 yılından beri gelen bir e, proje var burada. 2022 yılında, e, last month, e, pardon, 2022 yılının tam olarak... Evet, e, Şubat ayında lansmanlarını gerçekleştirmişler. E, i̇lk başta kendileri stakeholderlarını oluşturmuşlar e, ve e, cashback özelliklerini ortaya çıkartmışlar. E, Launchpad'lerle ilgili e, planlamayı gerçekleştirmişler. E, onun dışında 2022'nin sonlarına doğru da e, tokenlerine farklı özellikler eklemeye başlamışlar. E, Launchpad'lerinin e, tamamını e, ortaya çıkartmışlar. Ee, bir satış elemanı e, satış elemanı almışlar kendi ekipleri için. E, onun dışında e, şu anda 2020 2023'ün e, birinci çeyreğinde e, özel e, Ethereum ağında bir e, lansman gerçekleşmeyi planlıyorlarmış e, ve e, kra, e, ilk e, fon toplama etkinliklerini gerçekleştirmeyi planlıyorlarmış. Ee, ve e, kendi platformlarını monitorlayıp e, ellerinden geldiğince platformlarını geliştirmeyi planladıklarını söylediler. Okay, thank you very much for this information. Uh, would you like to get questions from the community right now? Uh, I believe I'm out of my questions. If you have uh, nothing else to add, we can move on to the questions. Yeah, sure. We can move on to the questions from the, uh, from the community. Uh... Okay, okay, thank you very much. Let me quickly find the questions for you. Uh, I will uh, pick the ones that we didn't cover uh, during the AMA session. Okay, first question. Uh, you are planning to make a bridge in Ethereum. Uh, do you have any other plans to uh, make another bridge in another blockchain? Uh, yeah, so basically uh, for our for our solution, Sidon Finance, uh, because it is a wallet, um, I mean, it's a Web2 solution with the wallet capabilities, uh, we have actually developed uh, the possibility to support um, uh, Ethereum, to support uh, Optimism and uh, Polygon as well. Um, at the moment, we only have Binance Smart Chain available because we don't have enabled for now um, any any uh, ETH tokens. Um, that is because uh, we want to take into consideration the, uh, uh, the the fees for that because at the moment we are supporting basically all fees because it's sort of like a, it's sort of like a hot wallet. Uh, but it is indeed supported for that. Uh, we're just uh, looking for new tokens to get listed on our solution, and then also enable the possibility to um, to set network. But yes, the solution has already been built to uh, to support those because 
uh, also those uh, those networks are sort of like similar, and uh, it has been uh, made agnostically in the implementation itself. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this information. Arkadaşlar, e, bildiğin üzere Ethereum ağına bir köprü yapmayı planladıklarını söylediler. E, onun dışında Ethereum haricinde bir ağa şu anda bir e, köprü yapmayı e, planlamıyorlarmış. E, fakat ilerleyen zamanlarda e, bunu düşünebilirlermiş. The other question, just let me quickly translate it for you. The liquidity that you are going to raise from the investors will be the aim of the hackers. Uh, where you are going to hold these uh, funds and how you are going to ensure the uh, safety of these funds. Um, are you going to compensate the losses if uh, any hacker attacks uh, occur in the future for your uh, investor? Right, so uh, in regard to the security uh, itself, uh, what I can say is the fact that we have been actually live for uh, for more than a year when they actually have had no security breach whatsoever. Uh, we have enhanced security uh, protocols in our in our implementation. Uh, the funds for the fundraising themselves are going to be held in a uh, in a BAC in a BAC wallet, which is specific for the fundraising itself. Uh, of course, we are managing the keys, uh, the private keys for that, which are also encrypted. And we have uh, we have fireworks in place. We have uh, made use of uh, AWS ecosystem to actually have everything deployed. So uh, it's it's very it's actually very very difficult to uh, to get to that. Uh, I mean, the only possible way to to get to that is to be sort of like an internal attack uh, to put uh, to put their hands on the on the keys themselves. Because nevertheless, if they would have access to the uh, let's say that out of um, out of nerd, they would have access to the um, uh, uh, the private keys for the wallet. Those are nevertheless encrypted with another private key, and uh, this uh, for this key I only have it, and uh, and my co-founder has a key, uh, so that would actually be quite difficult to uh, to crack. Uh, in regard to the um, the compensation, uh, no, we don't have a, we don't have a guarantee for that uh, because this is actually part of the risk management uh, and the and the risk policy that everybody uh, actually has in place in regard to the fundraising platforms and and so on. We're just an intermediary, and we don't assume any uh, losses for investments and for uh, for investments risks. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this information. Let me quickly translate them to Turkish. After that, uh, I will get one last question from you. Uh, arkadaşlar, uh, şu ana kadar platformlarında herhangi bir uh, güvenlik açığına uh, sahip olmamışlar. Uh, herhangi bir şekilde güvenlik açığını uh, bulmamışlar. Uh, fakat yine de uh, daha fazla güvenlik protokollerini eklemeyi ileride planladıklarını söylediler. Uh, güvenlikle ilgili herhangi bir sıkıntıları yokmuş. Onun dışında uh, Venom uh, ses istiyordu. Uh, soru mu soracaktın Venom? Eğer buradaysan soru soracaksan tekrardan söz hakkı isteyebilirsin. Tamamdır. Konuşabilirsin şu anda. İyi günler. Ee, ben şey soracaktım ya şimdi bu projeyi ben e, artık dinledim şimdi. Ben, e, güzel bir şey benziyor ama ben bir araştırayım dedim şöyle e, coin market cap'ten falan. Şu anda sadece herhalde Bitmart'ta listeli bu coin. E, bu borsa listelemesiyle alakalı e, bir düşünceleri var mı acaba bu CEO arkadaşın? Bir hemen e, sorunu soralım. And the uh, last question is about the Jax listing. Uh, we already talked a little bit about it, but can you also get into the details? Uh, do you have any plans to list in the t- uh, tier one exchanges in the future or in the near future? Uh, yes, we do have plans to, uh, to further list, uh, but it's not our priority for now. Uh, what we're looking further to have at the moment is to actually have the, uh, the first fundraisers completed because I, this is actually the, the most essential, the main goal for the product, to have everything validated, to have the business model validated and everything, uh, uh, let's say, confirmed according to the plan. Uh, and as mentioned before, uh, of course, we're going to further look down the road um uh, to for the listings entire one but of course we're going to need uh, for that um, as mentioned in the beginning perhaps a vc investments to to be able to complete that because for time wise changes there's quite a high fee for for listing and for maintenance um and yeah that is going to actually be part of our scale up program 
Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this information. And let me quickly translate this to Turkish. E, i̇lerleyen zamanlarda e, Jax listelerini daha fazla e, önem verebilirlermiş. Fakat şu anda asıl önceliklerinin bunun olmadığını söylüyorlar. E, tabii ki ilerleyen zamanlarda farklı e, merkezi borçlarda da listelenmeyi düşünüyorlarmış. E, onun dışında başka soru almayacağız arkadaşlar. E, Türk grubunu paylaşıyoruz. E, Türk grubuna katılım zorunlu. Eğer ki e, ödüllerden faydalanmak istiyorsanız e, Türk grubuna katılmanız gerekiyor. Projenin Türk grubuna katılmanız gerekiyor. Şu anda bunu paylaştık. Herkese katıldığı için teşekkürler arkadaşlar. Etkinliğimizin sonuna geldik. Hemen e, İngilizce şekilde de etkinliğimizi bitirelim. E, thank you very much for all of the information. Thank you very much for your time. It's a, it was a pleasure to host you here in our community. Uh, I would like to ask you that, do you have anything else before we end the AMA session? Uh, no, no, I think this is it. I'm very excited to actually be part of your AMA and to, to get to know your community and to get to present our opportunities and our project in, in front of your uh, uh, community. Uh, hopefully, uh, this uh, has actually been a, uh, a useful and, uh, and fruitful AMA. And perhaps uh, people are actually going to have an interest in regard to our project and uh, perhaps join and be part of the fundraisers. Uh, thank you very much. We would love to be part, be part of the fundraisers in the future. Also, we would like to uh, suggest you projects in the future because uh, we are also helping projects to raise funds. I believe uh, there are more uh, we can discuss of. Uh, we can talk this in the private group. Uh, once again, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure and we will be following the project closely. Have a nice day. Great. Thank you. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you for that. Bye-bye.